welcome back. So I'm still working away and doing the lower hull skins, which is taking a bit of time and it's not my favorite job. So for a change, what I'll do is I'll work on the upper hull skins uh, and the treatment of them. So there's a few things uh, we need to do. And as you can see, there's some windows here that need to be cut out and then the, the backs uh, formed up. So that's on the stern. And we also have the same on the, the sides here. I also want to do the, the portholes. So as you can see, they're printed with like a gray and a brass or orangey color porthole. So what we'll do with these is we'll punch them out uh, and replace them with brass uh, photo etch. So what we'll do next is we'll do the porthole treatment. So we need to punch out the holes here. I'll be using two mil uh, photo etch brass portholes. So we need to remove that. There's a couple of ways to do it. You could either use this style of punch here. Uh, I'm not a fan of this purely because of the cutting edges on the inside. So if you use this one, you've got a bevel on the outside edge. And then that means you'll have a gap around your photo etch uh, porthole. The other option is like a punch and die set that I used for doing the, the six inch guns a bit. On paper, they're not as smooth edged as I'd like and trying to line up through the plastic for the punch can sometimes be a bit difficult. So my preferred method for these type of portholes is to punch them out myself using a piece of brass tube. So as you can see, this is two mil. It's slightly undersized or just right on the size for these portholes, but they match perfectly for the, the photo wedge. So what we need to do is turn this into a punch. So just cut a short length and then using that drill bit that's slightly a larger diameter, if you go in and just manually twist it round, you can see some hopefully brass coming off. Okay. And then once you've got it right, hopefully you can see it's beveled in the inside now instead of the outside. So your cutting edge is on the outside. And then just to finally clean up a wee bit, because you might get some burrs, just some fine wet and dry paper. And I can't feel anything, so that's now ready to use. So what we do is, with this ready, if you line, line it up as best you can in the center, and then just give it a couple of taps. And then yep, that went right through. And then hopefully you can see, you've got a nice sharp edge. So using this technique, because the brass is quite soft, I guess, relative, you maybe get two, three, maybe four sharp holes uh, before you have to come back in and then just give it a little t few twists again just to sharpen up any edges. Uh, sounds like a bit of work, but to be honest, I think the, the actual result is very good. So the next step is to uh, prepare the, the brass. So here's the uh, photo etch portholes that we'll use. These are, as I said, two mil, and these are made by GPM, uh, GPM in uh, Poland. So as you can see, they've got the porthole and the, the rigol, which is the, the lip above the porthole. We'll just use the portholes, we won't need the rigoles. So the way to cut them out is 
is just by using a knife to separate the uh, little frets that join them. Now, don't do it directly onto the cutting mat because it's uh, relatively soft. So what will happen is it will push down before it cuts and you potentially distort your part. My usual preferred method is to use uh, an old DVD, CD, whatever, and that's a hard rigid surface, so you don't actually push, push down on it and distort the part. But because of the reflections that are coming off of it, you can also use just a piece of MDF. Okay. So to remove it from the fret, you've got you can go right up to the edge or come back and leave a tab. What I'll do is I'll I'll leave a bit of a tab. Okay. So hopefully you can see that. Now photo etch has got a top and a bottom. And you can tell by where the tabs are. The top's always got a recess, so you can slide the knife until you touch the part. On the bottom side, uh, the tab is flush, okay? Do it on a hard surface and either go up to the part or away from the part. I go away from the part and round parts so I can get the curve. If you go too close, you might get a flat, okay? The next thing is to file off the tabs. Hopefully you can see the tabs. I see people using these metal files. I don't like them. They're, they're very rough. And even an old worn one like this still runs the chance of uh, snagging and, and pulling the part. Okay. So the best thing is to use uh, the Tamiya diamond file, which is made for photo wedge, and although it's very smooth, it quickly removes uh, the brass. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can use uh, a diamond file, such as uh, such as this for sharpening knives, and it does just the same job. I used to use this all the time before I got the the Tamiya one. So to come in. We need to remove that. Now the other issue I had was you've got a shiny brass part on smooth shiny tweezers. It was very difficult to to grip it adequately. So what I've done is I've made uh, a clothes peg. It is just a normal wooden clothes peg. What I've done is sanded off the front so it comes uh, so it's flat, and then sand, sand off uh, some relief so we can get in from both sides. And I've also just stuck a couple of pieces of wood on each side. And that just keeps the jaws aligned because now uh, clothes beds are mass produced cheap and they've got a habit of going offset. So when you press them, the jaws move apart. So we're using the tweezers. I'm in the wrong hand. Moving the two. We can place the porthole right in the front of the jaw with the tab sticking out. And then using the file, okay, so just give it a few swipes. I've got zero pressure on that, it's just very lightly, but it quickly takes it down. Okay, so hopefully you can see then it's just a case of spinning it around. You gotta pin it again. We use this one just to show. So hopefully you can see 
in the finished uh, portal. So now we'll just um, we'll do that tile fit. Actually, before we do that, we'll just color the edges. So for this, because we will use a touch of glue, I won't use paint, I'll use the... So using the artist pen, we'll just come in from the back side. And we'll just come in, hopefully I won't come. And that's the edges covered. So what I would do, I, I wouldn't do it at the moment, but what I would normally do is just with white glue, just put a couple of dabs coming in from the back, just maybe one in each side. Put your port pole in place and then just press it flat. And then that is the brass porthole done. So the next stage is to put in the fake glass. So to do the fake glass behind the, the porthole, what I do is, or what I do is, if you can get a hold of old uh, floppy disks, some of the younger people might not know what these are, but we want the disk that's inside. So just split the the floppy disk apart and you get the the mylar sheet it's inside so what we want to do is cut some strips of that the portholes two mil i'm going to make these quite small so if we make them slightly bigger maybe three mil so just work your way through don't try and cut it in one hit because the, the blade puts a bit of an edge onto the, the flop, onto the material, which we don't want. So just do very light passes until you get through. You can do it with scissors, which doesn't leave any edge at all, which is good. And we'll just cut apart. We'll cut it apart. Try to keep it very, relatively small. So now we've got that, if we come back to this side and then just again, I just use normal, uh, normal white glue. And you can just put some around. Just give it a press. Hopefully you can see. We all got the, um, the porthole with the glass. Well, it's it's dark, it's very dark and reflective, so it looks uh, like glass. I think it's a better effect than the, the printed grey. It's up to yourself. It's a bit extra work, but I, I think the results is, it is worth it. And here's one side fully done. Okay. And then compared to the non-treated side, I hope you agree that the, the extra effort and work put in it is well worth it. So the next step is to cut out these uh, rectangle windows along the side. I've already done a couple. Uh, but rather than use uh, a knife blade for small uh, squares, rectangles like this, I like to use the chisels that I make. Uh, so I've made one for the short edge and one for the larger edge. I'll try and put a link up in the corner here uh, to how I've made them. And then what we do is we do, normally I would do all the cuts in one hit and then swap over and do the other side. But I'll just do the one for speed. So just line up the blade, this is a short one, and press down. 
spin it round. Actually, just to make a bit cleaner cut, if we do it in a hard surface again, like a piece of MDF, Okay. And we'll just swap out the blades. And then hopefully it just pops up. There we go. This little corner hanging up here. And there we go. So, so as you can see, you get very nice sharp corners using the, the chisel blades. Now, to paint the white edge now. I've got three methods of painting that I like, or two, but I'll show you my new one as well. So for edges that are exposed and won't be glued, I like to just use this watercolor block uh, with a paintbrush and just paint the edges. If the edge is going to be glued to another one, I use the, the pit pen by Faber Castell because the ink doesn't run when you apply the glue. The watercolor, the glue, the moisture in the glue reactivates it so it can't get messy. So non-glue, uh, glued edge. But now what I've started to use for edges where I'm not going to be gluing against, I've started using this German grey from Vallejo and hopefully you can see I've actually used it on uh, these two here. It gets a nice dark finish close to the paper color as well. So these two are, or these three is my, my methods of uh, color and edges. So the next step is to prepare the window it sits behind. Uh, the opening. So we'll move on to the windows now. So these ones here are for the stern. The side ones are virtually identical. The basic shape's the same, just there's no angles. So there's three main parts. We've got a, a hatch, a cover, the window itself, and a bar. It goes across the window. So you may be able to make out the holes on, on the side there. So as a single bar goes across. So that's supposed to be a 0.2 mil wire. I made it 0.15 because I don't have any more 0.2 and I just painted it white uh, with off-white Vallejo. Okay, so the first step to do is before we cut these out, we just need to make the hole first because it will be hard to do afterwards. So we just come in with the needle and then we'll just go down. The reason we do it now is it will be very hard to cut it because it's the parts, the hole's quite close to the edge. Okay, and then it will help us later. They, they'll close up once we start uh, manipulating it with the holes basically there so we could just re reinstate the hole. Okay, just going back to the hatch covers of the, these are simple uh, black squares, but there's just one thing, because the paper is so white and the hatches are in the open position, you can actually see the white. So what I've done is using off-white uh, Vallejo. I painted the backs of them, and here's the ones, here's them over here. So, hopefully, you can see, I'm trying to lift them up. 
So that's the white paper and the backs of the hatches have been painted off white. So hopefully you can see it's just not so harsh and glaring in your eye. And then that's just the cover. Okay, so just give them a paint uh, before you cut them out. To cut out the windows themselves, all I did was do the straight cuts first and then to take out the little square and the edges I just went in with the chisel bang bang and that was it done okay just take out the little corners and then what you're left with is these so these ones here are for the sides but like I say the, the, the shapes identical so with the part cut out and the two holes for the bar pierced the next stage is to fold them up so what i've done is you probably don't need to do this you could go straight in but i've actually drawn a pencil line from the corner to corner all the way around and that's just a guide for coming to cut you could probably just cut uh, straight through so with that said we can now come in and just cut the line. So we don't want to cut all the way through. We just want to score maybe halfway through if you can. So with that scored, we can now fold them. So we just flip it part over. We can now use uh, razor blades to make the, the bends. So if you line it up with the printed fold line, and then use another razor blade to come in, we can prise it up. If we come back to this one. Rise it up and then for the edges because we can't get the, the blade into fold what I've done is just a pair of eyebrow tweezers that I've, that I've ground uh, or filed to shape can then bend that one up and then the same for the other side So that's a basic window box uh, folded up. So the short ends go in between the long ends. So now we just need to glue these one at a time. So just using PVA glue, we'll just come in and put a bead of glue up that edge of the short side. And then we can glue that corner together. Okay, that was a bit awkward, but uh, we glued up in here. So we just work our way around for the other parts. So again, just come in, small bit of glue on the edge there. So working around each uh, corner one at a time, you eventually end up with a glued box like this, okay? So the next stage is to put the wire through the hole. So with all of the handling, what will have happened is the holes will have closed up a bit. So we just want to reinstate that holes. So coming back in with our needle, we'll just come back in. And just re enlarge a hole again. Okay, we do that for both sides. So 
So with the hooves reinstated, we just need to feed the wire through. And I've got a feeling the wires, the paint's going to get scraped off the wire. But that's okay, we can come back in. So hopefully you can see the wires through there. So what we'll do is, we'll just lock the wire in place. Uh, just with, just with a little bead of PVA again. Just a bead of PVA on both sides. Then we'll just trim, we'll leave little stubs, but that's okay. We'll just trim the wires off. And then that's the finished box. So on the, the wire, this one's not too bad. What you can do is you can come in and just touch up the wire again with some off-white. Once the glue's been off, we'll come back in and we can square up any edges that's been bent or pushed with the, the gluing process. So the bar goes to the bottom of the window. And then, so on the hull sides, where there's a, a dotted line near the top, that's the top of the hull, so we can just kind of position it to get a, an, an idea of the effect. Okay, so that's kind of what we're, what we're going for. I'm not sure how uh, clear that is. I'll take a photo just to show. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.